Well, you have been a most pleasant Christian family. And I'm a bit sad at leaving you. You know there are all kinds of stories about good news and bad news. Did you ever hear about the, the uh, doctor who came to a patient in the hospital and said, I'm awfully sorry, but I shall have to take off your leg. So he amputated it. The next day he came in and said, I have some good news for you and some bad news. Bad news first, I took off the wrong leg. <laughs> and the good news, the other leg is getting better. <laughs> there were three, three drunken men who came rooms on the 45th floor. They went out for the night and came back in even a worse state than before. And the clerk said, I'm sorry, but the elevator's broken. You will have to walk up. And they said, we don't mind. No, he said, don't walk up. He said, we'll put some cots in the mezzanine floor. You can sleep there. No, said the first drunk, we'll walk up. He said, for the first 15 floors, I will sing. And the second said, and for the next 15, I will tell funny stories. And the third said, and for the last 15, I will tell sad stories. They started up for the first 15 floors songs. Next 15 floors, funny stories. And they said to the third man, all right, begin your sad story. He said, I forgot the key. <laughs> so that's my sad story. I too am reminded of a, of a boy seven years old who had never spoken in his life. The parents did everything they could with him, but to no avail. One morning at breakfast, he said, this cocoa's cold. And they said, why didn't, you, why didn't you talk before this? Well, he said, up until now, everything was okay. <laughs> so up until now, everything was okay, but I have to leave you. I'm going to talk to you today about our Blessed Mother. And I shall begin by telling you about Lourdes. I will come back to Lourdes again. Lourdes is a town in the southern part of France where the Blessed Mother appeared in the last century. I have been to Lourdes 30 times. I shall never forget the first visit I made to Our Lady in Lourdes. I was then a priest student at the university in Belgium and I had just enough money to go to Lourdes, which is the southern part of France. So it was about a 24-hour ride on the train. But I did not have enough money to live on once I got there, nor enough to pay a hotel. I asked my brother, who was a medical student at the university, if he had any money, but he was a typical university student too. He had no money. And I said, well, if I have faith enough to go to Lourdes to celebrate the fifth anniversary of my ordination, it's up to the Blessed Mother to get me out. So I arrived in Lourdes, broke. I decided that if the Blessed Mother was going to pay a hotel bill, she could just as well pay a big one as a little one. <laughs> when you ask for miracles, you must never be a piker. And I went to the best hotel in Lourdes. By our standards, it would be a fifth or sixth rate hotel. And I decided to stay for nine days, make a novena of prayer. The ninth morning, nothing happened. The ninth noon, nothing happened. The ninth evening, nothing happened. Then it was serious. 
I thought I would give the Blessed Mother another chance. So I went down to her grotto about 10.30 at night, and while I was kneeling there, a portly gentleman tapped me on the shoulder. Are you an American priest? Yes. Do you speak French? Yes. Do you know Paris? Yes. Will you come with me and my family tomorrow to Paris and talk French for us and show us about the city? He walked me back to the hotel, and then he asked me what I believe was the most interesting question I ever heard in my life. Have you paid your hotel bill yet? <laughs> So I outfumbled him for the bill. And I arrived back in Louvain with much more than I started with. Now the moral of this story is not to go into hotels and run up bills. But it worked for me and Lord. I'm going to talk to you about our blessed mother under three titles. First as a dream, a dream. Secondly, as mother. And thirdly, as spouse. We never talk about that. As spouse. First, the Blessed Mother as a dream. She was God's dream. It sometimes happens in human love that men love in ideal before they love in fact. Their experiences, readings, become like so many separate pieces of a mosaic and they frame in their own mind the kind of a woman that they would like and one day that girl appears and the man will say that's it she's the one I knew a man in Switzerland who had hanging in his home a picture of a young girl and when he moved to America he took the picture with him and when he was a boy, he said to his mother, I'm going to marry a girl that looks just exactly like that. And he married one girl in my office who looked just exactly like that picture. He loved in ideal before he loved in fact. So some of you girls will be dream girls sometime. You don't know it, but you will be. And now our blessed Lord, I mean, God has a dream. Namely, the ideal woman. The first immaculate conception was in the mind of God. He thought of her from all eternity. Many of you have seen that famous painting of Whistler. Remember the, the mother that was in the rocking chair? And someone asked Whistler, how did you ever paint such a beautiful painting of your mother? And he said, you know how it is. One tries to make one's mummy just as nice as one can. Well, isn't it reasonable to expect that if we pre-existed our mother, we would have made her the perfect woman? Well, God pre-existed his own mother, and therefore he would try to make her just as perfect as he could. And she, therefore, was a dream and an ideal in God's mind. I think she was even thought of as the new Eve. God made a garden, as God alone knows how to make a garden beautiful. And then he put the first man and woman into it, and they fell and lost the garden. And then God thought of another garden, another Eden, a flesh-girt paradise 